Good day, dear colleagues. Thank you for your interest in our paper. My name is Ekaterina Lutikova, and my co-author is Anastasia Gerasimova. We represent the Moscow State University, and I would like to present our joint work entitled Multi-Valuation Meets Case Variation, a case study of Tatar postpositions. I now give the floor to Anastasia. Greetings, dear colleagues. In this talk, we address agreement and case variation in Tatar postpositional constructions with coordinated noun phrases. Tatar denominal postpositions display variation in possessive agreement with the complement, appearing either with a possessive agreeing is a fee marker or in an is a fee less form. This variation correlates with differential case marking determined by the morphological and syntactic class of the nomino. In this talk, we focus on configurations where two coordinated arguments belong to different morphological and syntactic classes. And we examine how person agreement is resolved in this case using experimental data. We would like to start with discussing what the views are on how case assignment and agreement mechanisms correspond to each other. In minimalism, case assignment is analyzed as a result of agreement by five features. The process looks symmetrical. While five features of the argument appear on the verbal head, a case reflex occurs on the argument. This view, however, has been challenged. It has been suggested that agreement is parasitic on case marking, and uh, this idea actually originates from the government in binding case filter, uh, which was the driving force of the subject DP entering this back head configuration with the agreeing inflection head. Many studies also argue that there is a fundamental difference between case marking and agreement. Of particular interest in this vein are less canonical environments, such as coordination constructions. In his recent paper, Philip Weiser supports the idea that case assignment and five features are underlyingly two distinct mechanisms. In particular, he claims that case assignment is always symmetric in nominal coordination and it is, unlike agreement, a purely syntactic mechanism. On the contrary, phi agreement can display asymmetries in nominal coordination and may happen both in syntax or post-syntactically. If phi agreement is syntactic, we observe default or resolved agreement in nominal coordination. If phi agreement is post-syntactic, then agreement is established with the linearly closest target and we observe the so-called closest conjunct agreement. A clear advantage of this approach is that different agreement patterns observed in nominal coordination are modeled successfully. With respect to case, uh, Philip Weiser suggests the so-called symmetry of case in conjunction generalization, which says that case is always evenly distributed among all of the conjuncts in nominal conjunction. However, you know, for this approach, for this generalization, a great source of concern are coordinations in which conjuncts differ in morphological case marking. Philip Weiser argues that such counterexamples should receive a different explanation. In particular, they are intrinsically morphological phenomena. In our study, we would like to consider such a counterexample in Tatar. In particular, our aim is to explore whether there is any relation between agreement and case assignment in case of Tatar coordination in postpositional phrases. So, what exactly is meant by the morphological nature of the asymmetry of case and coordination? Consider example one with suspended affixation in D core aesthetic. We observe differential case marking in coordination with the first conjunct remaining unmarked and the second conjunct bearing the case marker. So Weiser suggests that the actual case suffix is syntactically present on the first conjunct as well. His arguments are the following. So he claims that suspended affixation is not restricted to case markers. Uh, the deleted case markers can also trigger stem allomorphy. And suspended affixation is degraded when affixes are phonologically different. Weiser's analysis of such cases makes several empirical predictions for conjoint and piece to piece that systematically show different morphological case. First, uh, the first prediction is that uh, the case of all conjuncts but one is expected to be morphologically zero due to case market deletion. Second, the case that is not zero should be found on a noun that is peripheral to the conjunction. Finally, the case that is not zero is expected to be found on the final conjunct if it is a suffix and on the first conjunct if it is a prefix. 
Moreover, if in line with Weiser, we consider a case and agreement to be distinct mechanisms, we expect that there is no interaction between the case and phi agreement patterns. That is, while there are constraints for case assignment, any agreement pattern is possible. To test these predictions, a language would be useful at this point where one could compare configurations in which two conjoint NPs or DPs systematically show different morphological case and different agreement patterns. And this is exactly what we will be examining in Tatar. Tatar has two types of postpositions, plain postpositions and denominal ones. Those that are historically derived from nouns with locative semantics. Postpositional phrases with both types of postpositions demonstrate differential case marking. The choice between genitive and nominative case form is determined by the morphosyntactic class of the nomen. However, unlike plain postpositions, denominal postpositions also show possessive agreement with the complement nominal. That is, all nouns, including proper names, are used in unmarked form or nominative, while personal pronouns are marked genitive. As for possessive agreement, a possessive agreement marker or is a fee form is obligatory for third person pronouns and nominals, and is a fee less form is allowed for personal pronouns, but they can be also used with a is a fee form. So examples two and three illustrate this pattern. Uh, you can see that personal pronouns exhibit genitive case marking, while proper name Marat remains unmarked. Besides, denominal postpositions attest possessive agreement. For third-person pronouns and for nominals, the possessive agreement marker or is a fee form is obligatory, and the distribution of is a fee less form of denominal postpositions is restricted to personal pronouns. Given these differences in case assignment and agreement patterns, our research questions are the following. If two conjuncts belong to two different morphosyntactic classes, does the symmetry of case in conjunction hold in Tatar? Second, for both case symmetrical and case asymmetrical coordinated constructions, which conjunct controls first an agreement with postposition? Is agreement resolved based on the morphosyntactic class of a conjunct, based on its linear position, or both? And the third question, the following one. Is the correlation between agreement pattern and case marking observed postpositional constructions with a single argument preserved in case of coordination? We assess these questions using symmetrical coordination with conjunction HAM by the means of two surveys. In survey one, we conducted a production experiment with a fill in the gap task. The design was two by two with two factors. The first factor type of postpositional construction, either plain or denominal postposition, and the second factor the order of conjuncts, pronoun and proper noun, or proper noun, pronoun. As materials, we used coordination, which included a proper name and a pronoun. As an example, uh, coordination min hem marat, mi and marat. Both plain postpositions were used as baseline because they do not provide any information on agreement, they don't have agreement, and we used, they demonstrate only differential case mark. So as fillers, we use coordinations with noun phrases from the same morphological class, and the task was to provide case and agreement morphology for nominal coordination and postpositions in brackets. So 109 respondents participated in this survey. Uh, the data analysis has shown significant interaction of factors. Uh, importantly, we observe different proportions of frequencies for plain and denominal postpositions. If we aggregate the data by the case, in which nominals and pronouns were used without regard to the order of conjuncts, we see that proper nouns are rarely used in genitive, while pronouns can be used in nominative and are even preferred in nominative with plain postpositions which is kind of an unexpected result. If we consider agreement, we observe that third-person possessive agreement marker is preferred, regardless of whether the closest conjunct is third-person or not, and regardless of case marking. In 21% of cases, the non-agreeing form was chosen, which looks like an artifact of closest conjunct agreement. 
Crucially, the type of coordination we use does not make it clear whether the third person possessive agreement marker is an instance of default agreement or agreement with the proper name conjunct. So to shed light on this question, we conducted a second survey. In an acceptability judgments question, we manipulated the following parameters. In the first part, we collected acceptability judgments for coordinations like me and Marat with a proper noun and a pronoun, and we used different combinations of case and two types of postpositions, plain and denominal postpositions, and agreement was balanced across this part of the survey. In the second part, we asked about the acceptability of coordination with two pronouns in postpositional phrase, coordination mean, ham, sin, me and you, uh, and we tested different agreement patterns and combinations of case marking. As agreement patterns, we used five types of agreement, uh, no agreement, second conjunct agreement, default agreement, agreement with the first conjunct, and resolved agreement, which means agreement in plural. So 38 respondents from the previous survey provided their judgments on the uh, one to five Likert scale. And as fillers, we used postpositional phrases with one complement from different morphosyntactic classes. So the results review the most acceptable patterns for plain postpositions, which are the expected Marat in nominative and me in genitive, and me in genitive and Marat in nominative, and also a quite unexpected pattern, me and Marat with both conjuncts in nominative. The most acceptable patterns for denominal postpositions are Marat in nominative and me in genitive, and surprisingly, me in genitive and Marat in nominative is significantly less acceptable with denominal postpositions. As for coordination with two personal pronouns, we observe that the most acceptable case marking pattern is when both conjuncts are in genitive with the second conjunct agreement rated unacceptable. Take a notice that in general, we observe marginal acceptability around the middle of the scale. Let's get back to the predictions we had, assuming that case asymmetry is a morphological phenomenon. We tested a prediction that if only one of the conjuncts bears the non-zero case suffix, this non-zero suffix cannot appear on the non-final conjunct. Survey 1 results confront this prediction. The results show that non-zero case on the non-final conjunct can be found for both plain and denominal postpositions in production and is judged acceptable for plain postpositions in acceptability judgment survey. However, it is judged unacceptable for denominal postpositions, so overall we can say that we observe a lot more variation than is predicted. As for the agreement patterns, the prediction was that any agreement pattern should be possible. Again, this is not the case. In survey 1, we observed the difference between distribution of case marking patterns for plain and denominal postpositions, which means that agreement influences the choice of case. In survey 2, we see that second conjunct agreement is unacceptable for me and you coordination, which suggests that the agreement is restricted. So overall, we observe a lot more variability than is predicted based on Weiser's approach. Moreover, uh, the observed variability cannot be explained the same way as suspended affixation. In case of Tatar, there are no signs of stem allomorphy or any other morphological processes. Let's summarize what agreement patterns we observe. In survey 1, we could not decide whether the most frequent third-person agreement is default or second conjunct agreement. Survey 2 suggests for me and you conjunction that second conjunct agreement is unacceptable, unlike default agreement. This leads us to a conclusion that the third person possessive agreement marker can be considered a default agreement pattern in case of Marat and me and me and Marat. If we consider agreement, we see that closest conjunct agreement pattern is found only when the final conjunct is personal pronoun, but then the non-agreeing form of the postposition can be used. And we also see that the non-agreeing form agreement with the first conjunct or plural agreement can also be acceptable for two personal pronouns. So the results raise several questions. First, why for Barat and me and me and Marat coordinations only default agreement is used? 
why for me and you four agreement patterns are equally acceptable in acceptability judgment server why closest conjunct agreement is attested only for marat and me but not for me and marat or me and you and fourth why for marat and me and me and marat case of symmetry is observed Although we think that Pfizer's approach is not sufficient to explain this variability and actually contradicts the empirical data, we still suppose that this variability is best explained in terms of morphology. We adhere to the proposal by Paulina Luskova that in coordination constructions, the agreement morphology can be chosen due to grammar external mechanisms. Importantly, uh, the morphological features that are chosen in case of agreement with coordination can be absent in syntax. These features can be never used when there are syntactic features available. For example, in case of agreement with first or second person pronoun, the default form is never used. Besides, Paulina Luskova argues that agreement controlled by coordination is a novel instance of conventional usage of a type where grammar provides no instructions uh, and performance systems have to find the strategy for the resolution. This strategy may be governed by guidelines just like other grammar external conventions are. For example, the choice of polite forms, which is based on age, social status, and familiarity. In the light of this proposal, we answer the open questions. Question 1. Why for Marat and me and me and Marat only default agreement is used? We suggest that coordinations involving two personal pronouns and a pronoun and a proper noun differ with respect to how syntactic computation handles them. In case of uh, a pronoun and a proper noun, a grammar internal agreement mechanism is unavailable due to the lack of five features on the proper noun. Uh, accordingly, syntactic computation is unable to calculate the phi set of the coordinated phrase. That is why agreement happens post-syntactically and appears in the shape of default marker. The second question is why for me and you four agreement patterns are equally acceptable. In this case, both conjuncts have a full-fledged set of five features. Consequently, agreement may happen in syntax or post-syntactically. Question three, why closest conjunct agreement is attested only for Marat and me? In case of agreement with first or second person, as we said earlier, features are present in syntax and grammar internal agreement mechanism is available. In case of me and Marat and Marat and me, there is under specification in grammar, which places agreement under the action of the performance system, where usage oriented effects such as syncretism and linearity come into play. For me and Marat, we cannot distinguish these effects. Closest conjunct agreement conforms with default and we might observe syncretic agreement actually. For Marat and me, there is either default agreement or no agreement at all. As the lack of agreement is unavailable in case of me and Marat, we suggest the following explanation. The second conjunct licenses the isaphiles form of the postposition in syntax. However, grammar internal agreement mechanism is unavailable due to the lack of five features on the proper name. As the result, the second conjunct is unable to value its features and agreement is not established. The final question is why for Marat and me and me and Marat case asymmetry is observed. The results show that morphological case is mostly preserved for the conjuncts that belong to different morphosyntactic classes. The reversed marking is rarely attested. However, when it is attested, this might be the result of some sort of processing effects or non-standard result of ineffability resolution. The other line of reasoning might be that the frequency of these patterns is too high to be just processing. So we think that the unexpected strategies that we observe are actually conventions in terms of Luskova 2021. So the marker deletion on me, which looks like suspended affixation, should be considered a type of convention strategy used in Tatar, which is used as a means for ineffability resolution in grammar external computation. What makes Tatar different from other languages with suspended affixation is that suspended affixation in Tatar is not the only convention strategy available. To sum up, we have shown the following. 
the distribution of case marking patterns for plane and denominal postpositions actually supports the idea that agreement influences the choice of case. Contrary to predictions by Weiser 2020, case asymmetry in Tatar is not a morphological phenomenon. Um, contrary to the prediction, non-zero case is actually found on the non-final conjunct. The Tatar data also support the idea that in coordination, the agreement morphology can be chosen both due to grammar internal and grammar external mechanisms. However, if one conjunct lacks five features, grammar internal agreement mechanism is unavailable and commutation cannot be completed. We thank you for your attention and we will be very happy to discuss your questions at the conference or in the comments below. Goodbye and have a nice day.